Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to beautiful Chiang Mai. I'm coming to you from downtown Chiang Mai and I have an expat interview for you. So one of the things I spoke about with my expat interviews is I want you to get different perspectives on Chiang Mai. And so I have a wonderful interview with a YouTuber here in Chiang Mai. Come join me and you're really going to enjoy this one. All right, welcome to the channel. And so in my video about the heat in Chiang Mai, I asked, you know, expats living here or anyone who wanted to talk about their process to getting here to, you know, look me up on, on my email. And I came across Peter, and Peter has his own YouTube channel here. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But first I wanna know, I wanna get some bike story on you. People just don't show up in Thailand. So where are you from originally? From uh, Sydney in Australia. Sydney, Australia, okay. Yeah. So let's go to, you, you graduate high school. <laughs> Gosh, yeah. What happens from there? Did you go to a trade school? Did you just start a job or what happened? Uh, yeah, I got a job, started work as a butcher. Uh -huh. uh, didn't like that, I'm only a tall, skinny guy, so it was too hard for me. So I got out of that and uh, got in the security industry. So mm -hmm. all sorts of variety of work in security. And in the last couple of years, I've just been working as a truck driver. Okay. And uh, planning my escape route out of Australia. Yeah. Um, since uh, the big uh, COVID hit hit the world. Um, right. Yeah, just uh, made things a lot more expensive and a bit more of a struggle in the country. So getting away. But over the years, I've been travelling quite a bit each year anyway. So it's not like the first time overseas or anything. So. Yeah. Now you're not the typical, I know in America it's like 65 years old is the, that number of people have for retiring. So how old are you? Well, actually, tomorrow I turn 57. Yeah, so you're still so, young. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I am. I guess I am. Well, I feel that, so that's important. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like, I, I saved up for this, but I've been planning this move to Thailand for the last 10 years, mm -hmm. and seriously more in the last five years. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I just um, set that as a goal. I, I don't want to wait until I was retired. I don't want to struggle in my life in Australia until retirement age. Right. Uh, it's just getting too hard to do that. So with a bit of uh, uh, hard work and saving up money, um, yeah, I got over here early. Right. So, yeah. so normally there has to be something like maybe there's a video someone sees that catches their attention. What what was it that made you say, you know what, I think I want to live in another country? <laughs> oh look, um, I've been coming to Thailand here for the last oh, okay. 15 years. Okay, so um, I had a Thai girlfriend here for the last 10 years. We only split up last year unfortunately. So. Mm mutual agreement everything was fine but that's the way it is but over those 10 years I've been coming here and seeing her or using Bangkok as a stop off when I was going elsewhere around the world mm -hmm. and yeah, I just enjoyed the climate here I like the climate the heat I like the food I like everything there's nothing I don't like about it so yeah um, even though I go off to other countries and visit other countries mm -hmm. Thailand was always something I, I definitely was wanting to do right yeah. I know a lot of people when they think of Thailand, you know, just based on videos, a lot of videos you see on on YouTube, they think of the beaches, Phuket, you know, yes. Koh Samui. So why why Chiang Mai? Right. Okay. Um, right. When I think of um, the beaches and places like that, well, for a start, I don't drink mm -hmm. and I don't smoke. So that side of the lifestyle here is not a part of me. Right beaches all right I'm from Australia I lived in Queensland quite a lot I do love the beach um, but the way I looked at it is that Chiang Mai has the mountains all right and the scenery and the culture that I don't think is uh, right there as much anywhere else in Thailand mm -hmm. and I also ride a motorcycle, so it's one of the best places in the world to get out on a motorbike, so yeah. that's something I'm looking forward to doing. Um, the beaches, I, I'm living in a condo of a swimming pool, that's good enough for me. And not only that, but I live here now, so in 12 months time, I'll probably want to get away for a week or two, and I might fly down to one of the islands and enjoy a beach right. for a bit. But 
I found last year I went down there to Ko Chang on the island. It was beautiful down there. Mm -hmm. um, I went running across the beach, <laughs> dive into the water, and it was like getting into a hot bath. Yeah. Oh, it was terrible. It was nothing refreshing. There's no waves, so you can forget about surfing. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, straight back into the resort swimming pool. Wow. Yeah. You know, so. That's, that's more your temperature. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so Chiang Mai was more. Um, I think the climate's a bit better up here too, mm -hmm. um, at certain times of the year. Just had a lot more going for it. So. Right. And not as touristy in the way of, well, I would know for sure. I've only been here for three months and it's 10 years since I've been here last. Mm -hmm. And even last time I was here was only as a tourist for a week yeah. traveling through. Um, so I'll, I'll see. It gets busy, I hear, towards the end of the year. Right, November, December. So we'll see what happens then. Yeah, that's when that's when we arrived was October. Yeah. So it was really busy. We we landed in the city, um, stayed at one of the condos. I want to say Astra, Astra Sky I've River. Yeah. Yeah. So we stayed there. But um, you know, how did how did your friends and family take it when you said, "Hey, I'm I'm moving to to Thailand." I guess it was a slow thing that they always knew I was going to do okay. that. It wasn't. I wasn't just suddenly. Hey, guess what? I'm flying out next week. Goodbye. Yeah. It wasn't like that. It's because they been, saw you go back and forth for years. They know I've been okay. traveling. I've been, you know, all over Africa and the States and Europe and places and Asia in particular. Mm -hmm. But it's always been Thailand. Right. And having a girlfriend here for ten years, I come over here uh, once a year, mm -hmm. catch up with her for a month or so. So. So that wasn't a big uh, thing for them. Right. You know. But having said that now, um, I did have a bit of a drama about a month ago where my father fell ill, uh. um, critically ill. Um, so I only have one sister mm -hmm. and uh, she had to deal with everything back there in Australia when my father was taken to hospital and it was, it was it was at the point where doctors contacted us to ask us what he would like on life support. Oh wow. Yeah, but fortunately he's recovered from that, he's Good. back home and everything went alright. But that made me realise the distance and yeah. um, how far away I am. Right? That you know, you're going to have to, emergencies to come up like that, you know, so you got to have that in the back of your mind. Right, and that's a lot of things people don't, don't think about. I know when we First, we're looking at moving overseas. We thought about Central America, uh, South, uh, somewhere in Latin America, where we would be two hours from Florida, right, <coughs> where we're from. Yeah. But there was just something about Thailand that said, "Come see us." But I'm the same way. But thank goodness for technology, because I can talk to my mother, you know, of course. yeah, just like that from 9,000 miles away. Yeah. So that helps. Yeah. So so far, you've been here. What do you think? I know you've been here for years, but. Is there, what is it the most you like about Chiang Mai? For me, it's the food. <laughs> so, yeah. What about you? Oh, and the people. For me, it's the people. Yeah. You know, um, the food's good. I'm, I'm struggling a bit with the food. Mm -hmm. I'm not into hot, spicy stuff. Ah. So I, I can't, so when I ask for not hot, not hot, not spicy, <laughs> it usually comes spicy and hot. Um, but I think, um, it's the people. It's the yeah. people, you know. I can walk into a, a shop here and there'll be a girl there who'll serve you, she'll be nice to you, she'll smile, she'll be friendly to you. Um, people will, if you've got a question or you're lost, you need help for anything, people will just come out and help you. Um, yeah. It's just, yeah, just everybody's just much more open and friendly here, you know. Mm -hmm. and no, I agree. I, I love agree. that, you know, it's really good. And they're happy to talk too, you can just talk to anybody. I mean, I don't speak any Thai at all, but um, when I do come across somebody, they want to talk to me and I want to talk to them as much as, just as right. much. Um, one of the interesting things I found is if you go into one of the temples with the monks, a lot of them can speak English reasonably well and they love to practice their English. I discovered that as well, yeah. So go in there if you want to talk to somebody and, and hear from them all about the history and culture that they know and then they're just as keen to hear about stuff from you. So, yeah, yeah, just just the people. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, speaking of, of people, I, I discovered the honesty of people here. And to give you an example, it was uh, two days ago. I went to a restaurant uh, to order takeout, and I left there. I would say probably around noon, 
and I went home and about five o'clock I get ready to run another errand. I, I don't have my bag, but I keep my passport in, I keep my wallet in. Mm -hmm. And I kept trying to think what could have happened to it. And finally I remembered that I went to this restaurant. I was sitting at the table waiting for the order to get here and I left it there. And so, you know, the worst case scenario runs through your mind about having to replace the passport. I do keep, as I mentioned in my, my money management video, I keep credit cards, some credit cards separate for emergencies. But I got back to the um, restaurant. As soon as I walked in the door, she looked at me and she reached for the safe and she brought it out, you know. But, um, and I've, I've seen, I've heard stories of just, you know, people leaving their phones on the table and coming back later oh, yeah. and there. So yeah. I really appreciate, you know, the honesty of the people here as well. Yeah. No, that, that's exactly right. I mean, just the other day I had to get my, um, I got to renew my Australian passport. So I put it all on a USB stick and I took it to a place to get it photocopied. Uh, and they photocopied it and then I left, but I didn't take my USB stick. They still had it in their computer. Mm. And I got back home and I'm thinking, Oh, where is it? I'm looking around, searching everything five times. It's not here, and I realised, oh, I must have left it back there. And this is like five, six hours later. So I've gone back there. As soon as they see me, yeah, ah, we have, and they, the, there it is. Oh man, you, just, you could breathe now, right? <laughs> yeah. So I think it, I've learned a lesson there. Don't worry, it'll be all right. Yeah. They'll, they'll have it, or you'll find it, or you know, <coughs> leave the. Don't know about leaving the keys in your motor scooter, your motorbike, but. You know your helmet's going to be there. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and I left my phone on the phone holder for a few hours and came back and it was there. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, I don't recommend <laughs> that, but it, it happened. It turned out good for me. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that. I don't yeah. think that's an issue over here at all, no, really. No, uh, no, no. Now I know when I talk about my money management, and being from the United States, I, I mentioned Wise as far as transferring yes. money. So yes. what do you do? You use the same yes, thing I there? Do. Okay. Yeah, okay. definitely. Fantastic. Yeah. 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 I, I promote them on my channel as well because they, they're uh, quick and reliable and, mm -hmm. and you get a very good exchange rate too. Just the exchange rate you would anywhere else on the street. And the know? fee. The fee to transfer the it over is not that cheap. much either. No, yeah. no. Yeah. Try to get your own bank to do that. Yeah. yeah. No, that's what I would use as well. Yeah, definitely mm -hmm. using wise. I started off with Western Union uh -huh. um, and uh, another one, but no. Uh, Wise, they actually give you a card as well that you can use in the ATM yes, machine. Yes, I haven't used that yet, but mm -hmm. it's another good thing too. So yeah, yeah. Well, another thing that I discovered um, with Wise is the amount of money because I have the retirement visa, and so I had to transfer eight hundred thousand bots yes. to a bank here, yeah. and you know I had to do the the, the authorization. You know what's it called? The two figure or whatever authorization oh yeah but just that one time I had to do that and other than that it's been seamless moving yeah. money over here yeah I like easy <laughs> yeah wise is like that the first yeah. couple you do might take a day or two to go through but somehow it might recognize you after a while yes yeah, and you know they're it. not doing as many checks you you know you've been checked already mm -hmm. and it happens within minutes in some cases yeah you know, money goes into wise from my Australia bank account and then I'll transfer it into the Bangkok bank account here mm -hmm. and it's there within the hour there you go. Yeah. yeah. Now I know you've been coming here for somewhat like 15 years. I think you said. Yeah. 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 So with even with that, I know there's a difference between visiting somewhere and actually saying this is going to be my home. Mm -hmm. Did you have any challenges when you landed as far as just getting established as a resident and not just a visitor? Um, only challenges I had was in my mind mm. because it took me, I would say, a good month month and a half to realize that I'm not on a holiday yeah you know this is a permanent thing you know yeah um, and a lot happened in that first week when I got here you know because straight up you want to get your visa business sorted out mm -hmm. and get that application starting to happen for your retirement visa get the process happening and then while that's going on I, I booked into a hotel when I arrived here but now I've got to find a condo to live for the next 12 months that's no easy thing because the right. only minimum rent is 12 months in mm -hmm. most cases. So you got to find something you're going to like quickly, yeah. pretty much, because otherwise your hotel bill per night is costing you almost what it would if you're in your condo for a week. Right. You know, <laughs> That's true. It's That's ridiculous. True. The, 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 the oh. daily rate to weekly it's like renting a bike yeah you know? yeah you can buy you can rent a bike for 300 a day but you can rent it for a month for 3,000 mm -hmm. so um, 
So yeah, I, I got my condo sorted out. Um, within, luckily for me, it took about three or four days and I, I found the place that I wanted and thought this is it. And yeah. It had everything I wanted, except for a gym. Um, but that's okay, that's okay. Mm. I never went to the gym before. That was just an <laughs> idea of something I was going to do. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> that uh, I may or may not, I should. I know I should, I need yeah. to. But well, you know you get your you cardio know. in because you walk a lot. Yeah, but that's flat. Yeah. When you yeah. get to the temples in the mountains and you see those <laughs> stairs, no. Nah, I got up to, what is that mountain here, Doisa Tep? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I looked up those stairs, and yeah. I've gone, ah, uh -uh. and yeah. I didn't. I got back on my bike. <laughs> and now that I got my bike, I don't walk so much. Oh, sure, yeah, I see, I see. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, it was, <laughs> it's it's a different thing when you come here to live. Right. Um, <clears throat> because you need to sort all your business out, and there's a lot of expenses up front. Mm -hmm. First, to start off with, you got to have your, you know, extra deposit on where you're going to rent. You got yeah. to pay your fees. In my case, I went through an agent, so there was fees there, mm -hmm. um, and just your first bills that come through and things like that. And then after that, you settle in and you go, all right, this is good. Now yeah. uh, I'm retired. What do I do? I know. I know. That's <laughs> you know, the hard part. What am I going to do? Well, I got YouTube. So well, and that—that's that's, a good transition. That's, that's a good transition. I was just going to talk about that. So. We, we talked off camera, and um, you had a previous YouTube channel which had nothing to do with travel, okay? <laughs> but let's, I'm gonna bring the two together, but when you got here, and you're like, okay, I'm retired now, what made you say, you know what, um, I, I think I wanna start a, a YouTube channel. I wanna be a creator in, in the aspect of helping people figure out how to move here if that's what they wanna do. Well, that's exactly what the idea was behind it, was to just show my experience mm -hmm of coming here and uh, what you have to go through yeah and then once you've gone through those things um, then expand it out to what's to see here mm -hmm. you know um, Chiang Mai for now who knows later yeah um, been through the burning season and all of that's true here yeah. I came in the worst of that and I can honestly say it's just gotten better and better as the weather's cleared where you know we're in good weather now I can actually see from my balcony for the first month, I just seen the nice view of the countryside in the distance. Right. It was nice, but there's always been that smoke. Mm -hmm. Now, in the last couple of weeks, it's cleared, and I can actually see mountains, massive mountains. Yes. My, my million dollar view just turned into a two million dollar <laughs> view. It's beautiful. I never saw them before. Yeah. So there's exploring going to happen when I head out there on a bike. I have never been so happy as to see rain that oh. we've had the last uh, maybe week or two weeks yeah. but it was so good to see that rain come and yeah. put out the fires and, and clear to the air force yeah. and the yeah. temperature dropped a little bit even though the humidity went through the roof um, yeah so but yeah to, but the channel is basically my personal experience going through mm -hmm. and from what I've got feedback from people who are watching is that there seems to be a lot of people wanting to come to Thailand yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of people are curious um, or people who are here and just want to do things like you know, maybe they're in the south of Thailand thinking of coming up to Chiang Mai mm -hmm. and having a look around, you know, just for a change. Because the thing when you're renting is you're not locked in. Rather right. than buying a place, you, that's it. You know, you, you bought the place, you're there. Mm -hmm. But renting, you 12 months, in 12 months, I might go, oh, I don't like Chiang Mai anymore. I might go down Pattaya or something. I don't yeah. think I will, but, <laughs> you know, you, you don't know. So. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Are you think that Chiang Mai will be your home for the foreseeable future yeah I think so yeah I think so yeah yeah, yeah. I'm enjoying what I'm seeing so far and mm. it's just getting better and uh, yeah it, it, Chiang Mai the city itself and even around the su suburbs or the provinces mm -hmm. you can walk or ride down one street every day and you will see something different yeah you know I agree um, You'll see, and the, the Thai people are so creative in their art. Just some of the coffee shops are just works of oh art. My gosh, you yes. see waterfalls and mountains and sculptures and stuff in these places. I mean, there's a, there's a whole story there on its own, and God knows how many coffee shops there are. <laughs> you, you put that well, you know. It's not, you know, you go to in the United States and probably places in Australia as well. You know, you go to a Starbucks and it's just a restaurant. You go to a coffee shop here, it is an experience. 
It yeah. really is. And, yeah. and they don't rush you out. If you want to sit there for hours, you sit there for hours, you know. And that's what that's what I had to get used to because I was so used to eating lunch really fast and go do yeah. something else. But now, lunch may last me and my wife you know, an hour and a half, two hours because we just sit and talk and yeah. enjoy it. And that's the good thing about being retired. Yeah. You've also got to learn to slow down too. Yeah. You don't need to walk so fast anymore. You know, just walk casual. Tourists, we walking around fast, but the locals, they don't even walk. No. You know? You, I look out in the streets there, you don't see Thai people walking up and down the streets. They don't. Mm -hmm. They get on their bikes and they ride yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. They don't walk anywhere. I tell you what I've been amazed with also is, like, I live out in Dorset Cat, and I see people in their 70s and 80s, they're on a regular bicycle. Some are on motorbikes, you know, at that age, but they keep moving here, you know. Yeah. You will see them working, you know, in the rice fields at you know, in their, in their 70s and 80s. So I just think, I, I know a lot of it's out of necessity, but they always have a smile on their face too when you, when you see them. That's what I love about this. Yes. Um, I don't think there's that, the Western society probably has a bit more greed and a bit more wants than needs. Right. Okay, people's wants have grown. Mm -hmm. You know, you want the latest iPhone every year. You know, I got an Android Samsung here that's five six years old yeah you know I don't need the latest thing um, it's it's changing so much but the, for the Thai people I think it's just that their tradition and their family life is is really important to them and they and and that takes priority over everything yeah you know? yeah so. is there um is there anything you wish you would have done differently or would have maybe looked into a little more before you came here Oh gosh! But you had that experience of 15 years, so yeah, the, the, the planning um, was already there. Yeah, yeah. there isn't. I, I knew exactly what I was coming into. Yeah. I really did. Um, it's a shame that I didn't come here and retire with my girlfriend of 10 years. Yeah, that was part of the plan. Mm -hmm. But for her, it was. Uh, she was from a small town in Korat, and. Uh, it's, uh, she was very family orientated. They had a small restaurant in the village and she didn't want to leave. Right. And I didn't want to live there because there's just nothing to do. I would have just gone out of my mind for boredom. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't live there either. So it was either come to me, come with me to Chiang Mai yeah. or yeah, so we agreed to disagree and it didn't happen. So yeah. um, that's a shame. I wish, uh, have worked around things like that would have been better but now i'm here i'm happy i'm single and i don't plan <laughs> on changing that for a long time there you go <laughs> and uh, i'm going to be careful and make sure i don't get into trouble with anyone and yeah i'm all good <laughs> living, living your best <laughs> life right yeah yeah i mean back home in sydney i was on my own for the last five six years so i'm i'm used to being on my own yeah and doing my own thing if i want to jump on the computer and play a few computer games i will if i want to mm -hmm. edit some video i will if i want to do my my other hobby there, I'll do that. So, yeah. You know, it's, it's no, it's good to have control of your time like that. That's one of the things you I really need love to, about. Yeah. Especially when you retire. Yeah. I mean, I jumped from, I went from driving a truck 12, 13 hours a day, okay, to nothing every day. Mm -hmm. And then pretty much within four weeks, I'm on a plane coming here wow. to retire. I left my job earlier than I planned. I wasn't planning on coming here until about September mm. this year. But job, work got miserable really fast so I couldn't handle anymore so I got out yeah. but I come straight here and then like most people when they retire you've got nothing to do now you need to have a hobby right you need to start something yeah otherwise you're gonna end up sitting in a bar all day drinking your life away or mm -hmm. now you know smoking your life away I don't know yeah. but you got to have a hobby so. Yeah, because I, th I think what happens is, you know, even if you hate your job, at least it gives you some purpose. But once that job is done and you don't have purpose, that's when you start, like you say, going to the yeah. bars, watching Netflix all day or, or whatever, and, and just become sedentary where you're not moving. Yeah. And you retire to extend your life and to enjoy your life. But actually, if you don't do anything with your life, you can end up shortening your life. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Now with me, I know I've received some emails and I talk to people back and forth 
on emails and I actually have a video coming out uh, real soon about that. So what advice would you give someone who says, say they're from your country, they're from Australia, your, your old country, <laughs> say, mm. they're, say they're from your country and they say, hey, man, I, I, I watch your channel and I will put a link to his channel, Discover Thailand, in, in the description below. So they say to you, I want to come to Thailand. Um, what advice would you give them as far as, you know, coming here? Because I know a lot of people, there's no place that is perfect, you know. So some people have these rose-colored glasses on, even though Thailand is wonderful, mm. you know. But what advice would you give them as far as making the move to Thailand? I would definitely come here for a holiday first. Mm -hmm. Don't make it, if you've never been here before, don't make that move yeah. straight away. I mean, Thailand ticks all my boxes, but that's just me. You know, everybody's individual. Some people might live, might some people might love it in Antarctica. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, seriously, there's somebody would. Yeah. But somebody might like to be in Europe or South America, whatever their reasons. But you've got to try it first, all right? Test it before you jump in. Mm -hmm. um, so, and spend a good time here too. Like, at least give it a month. You know. Um, and YouTube's a great place for research as well. If you yeah. want to know what you got to do to to get all the requirements and so forth, and moving and everything else you need to know about, that's not a problem. You can find that out on YouTube. But to be here, experience the climate, experience the people, the cultures, um, the food. Uh, you've got to do that. You, you really got to do yeah. that. You know? No, I agree with you. 100% um, on different that. cities as well. Like, if you want to go down the south and go to the islands, do that. Come up here to Chiang Mai. You know, out in the west as well is really nice and east. Yeah. Um, but travel around and have a look and, and, and see. Yeah. No, I, I know you you cover this on on your channel, um, but just an overview. How did you come up with your budget that you want to do your monthly budget? <laughs> My monthly budget, all right. So I'm on what they would say is really tight budget, mm -hmm. okay, because I, I'm not retired. I'm not earning a pension from Australia. Um, I don't have any income. Um, I don't have investment properties anywhere. Um, I do not have any debts, so that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I came out here, you know, earlier than I expected as well. Um, but I am 57. I don't know how it is in other countries, but at 60, and in my case, I get access to my superannuation. Mm. So that's where either you and or your employer during your entire working life has been contributing to. Mm. And that builds up over your entire working life. And you can access that at 60. So I've got three years of okay. budgeting on yeah. what I've managed to save up over five years um, for this, including my uh, amount you need in the bank for your visa and then your living expenses money on top of that and then I've worked out a budget but the condo I'm in is really nice it's 8000 a month I've got a really good deal on that mm. um, and for food I don't go out to restaurants and eat because I'm happy to eat on the streets and in the food places on the, on the where it's a quarter of the price right and, and I still get a good meal um, mm. I'm not at the point where I'm eating um, Toasties in 7-Eleven, yeah. cheese toasties in 7-Eleven or anything, but but it's an option, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, YouTube is a, a small income. Um, you know, I'll be honest. It, it at this point right now, I do want to build that up, and I do want that to to grow, and it is. Um, and at the point where it is now, it's almost covering my rent for the month. Um, so that that that's really good. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, I've got three years of getting through on this level before mm -hmm. I jump up to this level yeah. and then I can go, right, time to upgrade. Yeah. No longer rent a bike, I'm going to buy a nice 500cc there you go. Kawasaki and now I'm going to you know, maybe uh, change my condo or something or mm -hmm. what the hell, I might even buy one. Yeah. So I've got a substantial amount of money coming, money coming that will see me through the next 10 years until I hit retirement age. Okay. And then of course retirement age is uh, your pension mm -hmm. um, from Australia, which a lot of expats over here are living on. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've come in, I've come in. Live quite well on that. So, no, that's interesting yeah. because so many systems are so different. Like in the United States, Social Security starts at 62. Yeah. Um, 
but then to get your full retirement, depending on what year you were born, it could be 65 or 66. So that's why I really wanted to, to, to meet with you because I know different countries have different you know ways they do things and different yeah. criteria you have to meet. So yeah, so I've been in, I'm Australian. I've been working since I was 17 years old. I've never been unemployed, and that contributes to your pension age. How long you've been working for in the country mm -hmm. um, as an Australian citizen um, determines the age of your pension. So some people might get it earlier than 67, might, some may get it later mm -hmm. for different reasons. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's good information. Yeah. Now, you say you've been here for how many months? So I got here in the middle of, well, I think it was a few days after um, Valentine's Day in February. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So a little over yeah. three months, almost four months. Yes. And yeah. you have a lot of videos out already. <laughs> You've been busy. I have. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I've been busy because there's been a lot of content to make because I've had to do a lot, you know. Yeah. Um, like I say, finding a place to live. I'm, I'm documenting what mm -hmm. I'm going through. So I've made videos on all that, starting with the day I left. Yeah. You know, and coming over here, you know, mm -hmm. and staying in a hotel and then finding, uh, I think I went through Perfect Homes for oh, yeah, the, yeah. the rentals, yeah. Um, and, uh, and and yeah, it's just been happening. Now it's starting to slow down a little bit, mm -hmm. so after three months almost, yeah, it's, it's starting to slow down, although I've just rented a motorbike now, mm -hmm. which I'll probably keep for the next year, you know, I've got a really good deal on that. Um, in fact, the guy who rented it to me, I went to see this person about buying a bike, mm -hmm. but my budget was only about twenty to 25,000 Thai baht. And he advised me that you're gonna get something that's about 10 or 15 years old for that, and you're gonna have problems, you're gonna have maintenance, you're gonna have insurance and issues. He said, you're better off getting a bike per month at, um, for a good price mm -hmm. where everything's covered. You've got your insurance on the bike, don't have to worry about registration. Yeah. Um, when when it comes for service, I'll give you another bike and keep it for a couple of days, and you can trade up or whatever oh, you wow. like. Yeah. So it's really good. So now that I've got the bike, well, that's opened up more things, and the weather's clearing. So mm -hmm. I do want to get out on the road and visit, like I did in Australia when I had a um, I had a big uh, Suzuki V Strom 1000 over there, and I travelled around Australia and did lots of trips on that. Yeah. And I sold everything before I left, everything. I came wow. back, I came over here with one suitcase with wow. all my belongings <laughs> and that was it. Um, yeah, yeah, because that's all you really need because you yeah. can replace everything. You know? Yeah, yeah. You can replace everything you need here. Um, and I, I really wish people would understand that because, you know, I, I know, and I have people ask me in emails and family ask me, you know, I think a lot of them still look at this as kind of like a third world country, but I've done videos of a mall. Um, anything you can get in the United yeah. States, you can pretty much get here, yeah. you know. And so, um, yeah. and then, you know, you mentioned your condo. Like in the United States, if you were to rent a condo or rent a home, you have to buy all this furniture, which is not the case here. No, of course not. No, yeah. that's right. Uh, condos here come with all that included. Yeah. That was right down to the bed linen, to the knives and forks and cutlery in your kitchen, your yeah. TV everything you just walk in there and then go get food to put in the fridge yeah that's it and, and some condos have amazing. like once a week cleaning you know depending yeah. on the condo so you yeah. get almost everything i in fact i i i'm not a very good housekeeper myself right <laughs> so the floor is all tile uh -huh. all white tile so after about the first month there it's starting to get a bit grubby a bit dirty so i bought a broom one of those straw brooms they have oh you know? yeah so I swept up and then I bought a mop and a bucket and some detergent stuff to clean the floor. So I thought, I'll do this, no problem. I got the mop <laughs> and I did the whole floor. And I thought, great. And then it dried worse than when it before I started. I saw that coming. <laughs> watermarks and patchy, the whole yeah. thing right through. I thought, what have I done? <laughs> so I spoke to the people in the reception desk down in the condo who run with, the, we have cleaners in there. It's quite a big place. Mm. And I said, is it possible I could get a cleaner to come up and do, mop my floor? Yeah, no problem. They took the, what day and what time, I booked it in, no problem. Then on that morning, I knock on the door, four girls showed up. Wow. They went in there, they spent half an hour in there, they swept, they mopped, they cleaned it all up. It was sparkling new, like it looked so like the floor of the Taj Mahal, <laughs> right? And then I said, how much is that? 
100 baht. Oh wow, so we're... 100 baht, that's all, like $4 Australian. Yeah, like $3 American. Yeah. And wow. I'm like, Wow, so I'm never going to mop the floor again. <laughs> it probably cost you almost as much in cleaning supplies as it were to pay them. Yeah, it did, that's right. So oh, oh. Um, what I found out was that I shouldn't have used the detergent. I should have just used the damp mop yeah. and gone across it all. But, but you have to worry about that. I don't worry now. about that now. I've got cleaners. I've got, my own, I've got my own maid that comes in once a month and yeah. mops my floor. Wow. Problem well, that, solved. I tell you what, I, w I would keep you here for hours just talking to you, but you know, we want to keep this at a reasonable uh, time. Sure. But thank you so much um, for your time and thank you so much for your knowledge. And one of the things, to me, YouTubers in Chiang Mai, this is not a competition. This is a sharing of ideas. I really want, you know, you can learn from me, you can learn from Peter. I'm going to put his, his link in the description down there because he's covered stuff I haven't covered yet. You know, he's covered. Um, the, the, the visa, how to get your visa. He's, he's covered how to get a Thai driver's license. And so there's nothing wrong with checking out different channels and getting different information from different channels. So please check out his channels below. And anything you want to leave with, any final words of wisdom or knowledge or? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it, that's it. Just, yeah. yeah, it'd be great. Just get along there and watch the channel and you might yeah. pick up something, particularly if you're planning to move to Thailand or yeah. even if you're here and thinking of coming up to Chiang Mai because that's mm -hmm. what it's all about at the moment is uh, Chiang Mai. And he's a lot like me. We do stuff to try to educate you and entertain you. You know, we have videos for different things. And I, I will say this, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this because he's probably gonna get even busier, but he's he's been, from what I've seen, he's been very responsive um, with answering. You know, he doesn't leave them for weeks and months. If you have a question in the comments, he's pretty good if it's a day or so, he's gonna get back to you eventually. So, so reach out to him if you have any questions as well. But once again, thank you for joining me on this video. I love you and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.